Hey folks, Mike here. Today we talk about MIDI programming. Um, it's a fantastic topic. Um, it can be quite complex. I know that a lot of you guys are non-drummers who program their own drum track and either you find a drum groove within the countless libraries that come along with all the drum software or you really do the work on your own and build a drum track from scratch. And today I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to build a drum track from scratch, which sounds horrible in the first place, but then show you some tips and tricks how to make it more human. Uh, both tricks regarding the MIDI performance itself, as well as some settings within the software. The video is a little bit longer than usual, but I think it's worth. So let's find out and um, do some MIDI programming. So let's start here. For this example, I've picked a song uh, which you all know. Um, it's Black Velvet from Alana Miles. I did um, the programmer of this drum beat uh, some, some weeks ago uh, for the cover I did with um, Ana Lopez. You may check um, in the info box that you see right now in the, uh, in the screen or in the description box. So here's the first uh, few seconds of the song. I'm pretty sure all of them, you know, heard them already without the drums first. Okay, so um, it's a triplet based uh, song. You hear the bass guitar is playing those uh, driving triplets, which makes the groove of the song. So what I did, um, I opened up Superior Drummer. Uh, by the way, I'm using the Decades SDX, but of course this doesn't matter. I've created this um, drum MIDI groove here. Um, and of course I know how the song was played, um, So, but it doesn't matter in this case. So it's, um, I set here in the top left corner, I set the grid uh, of the MIDI overview here to 16 snow triplets because that's what we play. The song is played in 12-8 um, and the song is pretty easy but this is the reason I've picked exactly that example because though the song is rather easy in terms of like it's just like a constant 1-2-3-4 beat on kick and snare, the hi-hat here is making the difference but especially those triplet based uh, songs are a good example how you can humanize the whole song um, using MIDI. So uh, you see, I just stupidly programmed uh, the, the MIDI. And the cool thing is that when you pick the right um, triplet here, or like the straight beat, the notes fall exactly on the grid. Uh, so in this case, uh, it's exactly the same every single beat. Everything is at velocity 127, so of course it will sound, sound stupidly, but here's the first, the first uh, three or four bars um, with everything at 127 uh, and no humanizing at all. course it sounds ridiculous isn't it so um the first thing that you want to do is of course get rid of all the same velocities because that's too obvious no one plays like that um not even like a, 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 a beginner drummer because you're not able to keep the tempo anyway or of course no professional drummer as well so the first thing i'm going to do um because the hi-hat is here the main part uh, i'm going to start with the hi-hat you can do this just like by enabling all of them and here in the bottom left corner, just bring down the velocity to a healthy level because 127 is really like the hardest hit you can play, which is not the case here. So bring down, let's uh, check there are at around 90. So it's a decent thing. But of course, they're not played all in the same, um, let's say, velocity, uh, even if it's just 90. So what you can do is you can randomize slightly here and you will see how the notes are slightly changing. You don't want to exaggerate that, like doing this. Um, this is crazy because this uh, a drummer wouldn't play either. So just like start at a healthy level, something like 10, 12. This is really kind of like a step-by-step -step approach until you have the feeling that it sounds right. So let's bring up the velocity a little bit more again. And let's just listen how this sounds now. So it's already an improvement, isn't it? Um, of course you can like then fine tune, but we need a starting point. 
So secondly, uh, what you're going to do is uh, with the hi-hats, you see here in the top corner, um, you see again, it's a randomize, but this randomize is not about the velocity, it's about uh, how the notes fall on the grids or how accurate the drummer, uh, in this case superior drummer, is being playing. And the same as for the randomized function here, you don't want to exaggerate here, just start subtly. Um, I wouldn't recommend to highlight every note and then randomize the whole beat because it really is um, sometimes too much. What you can do is just like pick randomly um, some notes here, just holding the shift key and just like doing like something like this. Of course, you don't want to do this. Um, so let's do this on the fly, really randomly. And just when you highlight them and now randomize again, just maybe to, you see slightly how the, mo uh, the notes are changing. Let's do 11. We're getting somewhere. So uh, now let's go to the snare. You see all hits uh, on the center, so let's do the same, bring down the velocity just a bit so that we just don't have always the 127. Of course, uh, the backbeat here is really important because that's what's driving the song, like this groovy uh, triplet based hi hat and bass guitar, bass guitar feel and then the constant kick and snare falling on one and two and three and four of course um, but you don't want to have the loudest hits always so always good to decrease the velocity quite a bit and the same for the kick just a little bit um, and for the snare it's even more important um, as there were less notes than the I had you, you really want to be careful when it comes to randomizing not to fall on the grid uh, in this case I think we can do this so let's start with the snare here and again, just highlighting more or less randomly some notes. Some of them, it's not bad when they fall on the grid here, um, because that's what a session drummer is supposed to do any right, 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 to play really tight. So you don't want to randomize all the notes here. So just going onto this beat here and again, Randomize a bit, just maybe four to five, six. The problem is like with a steady bad backbeat, like in this song, when the notes are really not falling uh, more or less on the two and the four, you will recognize. Um, and this is kind of like what the human uh, factor is doing here to know when you when you are dragging and when you are rushing. Um, so let's hear of this sound so far. So I think we are getting closer. Um, it sounds way better than of course before. Um, the next tip I wanted to give you is um, going into the settings of, in this case, Superior Drama. Um, I'm highlighting the snare and you see here on the right where you see hit variations, um, it's randomized hits. This kind of like determines all the, um, let's say the software, how it picks the, the um, corresponding wave files or the sounds that have been captured during the recording uh, the moment the note has been triggered by the MIDI. So if it's kind of like randomly pick randomly from the sample pool they created or it's always the same. And you can even emphasize this or enhance this by um, checking this box here, use alternative alternate hits, because sometimes Superior Drummer or the drummer, they capture the snare with the left and the right hand. So this snare, you might think now it's the same, but it's not if you hit the instrument with the right hand or the left hand, sometimes it's, a little, it's just like a little subtle character that's changing. By enabling this box, you make sure that the sample pool is picking randomly both left and right. In this case, the drummer would play the snare always with the left hand, but it just enhances that human feel. And the same here goes to velocity, to volume, and you can read already this little yellow box here, lower or raise the volume of the sample, play to better match the incoming velocity. So it's really, even more reacting to the level changes you are doing in the MIDI grid. So let's enable that and the same for the hi-hat, by the way. So let's go back now to the grid and have it listened again.
it's not the correct higher groove, by the way, for this song, and we can talk about this uh, in a second. Um, but this is kind of like then a creative decision, which I cannot ta uh, teach you here in a video. Like music creativity cannot be taught. Uh, either you have it or you don't have it. So you have to think as a drummer a little bit, of course. Um, but there are, I just want to show you some, like say, technical things, how to program more realistically. Uh, the next thing I want to show you, um, take advantage of the different articulations the software is providing to you. In this case, for um, most and foremost for the snare. So let's start here with the snare. You see you have two different articulations, which center and off-center. Off-center is exactly what it's meant to be. It's not exactly in the center, it's slightly off, which of course will alternate the sound. But you can take advantage of that, um, not to create always like the same steady sound from the snare drum except you want exactly that and that's the key here um, if you program a beat for a hip-hop production you want the same single hit every single time because that's what the music is asking for in this case we can play along with that so this is how it center sounds and this is the off center so here it's not that loud and articulated, uh, but let's do the same as with the randomize function. What I do here now, I will randomly pick some notes. So let's do this. You don't want to like pick every second note because then it becomes static again. So just like randomly um, as a drummer, like every seventh or eighth hit, he's hitting the different notes. So let's do this and this and then skip some and maybe two in a row and this and this already, and this, and no, not three, uh, maybe going to the first fill here. So let's this, and by holding down the shift key and dragging um, the mouse cursor down, uh, you will make sure that the notes are stay exactly on the grid where they were before. And as the notes are a little bit quieter played, uh, you want to compensate for that by bringing up the velocity again slight a Bits. So let's hear how this sounds now. So now as an engineer I would say, uh, ask the drummer, could you please play this again because it was too quiet, but if you want to create something human, that's exactly the way to go. Of course, um, what always comes um, in this case and in every single case when you program, there is no way how to avoid like the nitty gritty, tiny, subtle things that you need to adjust. So going into every single note or not every single note, but into some parts of the song where you adjust manually just exactly maybe that note, because I thought that this might be too quiet here. So I bring it up just individually. But this is like something that happens after. I just want to show you as again, um, a step-by-step -step approach. So the next thing is um, now really, I think the hardest part for all you non-drummers out there is think as a drummer, what a drummer would do uh, and how, and look at your drummer, how he's playing um, and just like try to think in his head. So of course the beat here usually starts with a crash on beat one together with a kick drum. So let's do this. Let's make this a little bit bigger here. So it's easy, either you use this tool here in the top left corner and delete this and write a new one, for instance, at symbol two. What you can do also is just enable the arrow here, highlight the note, hold down the shift key and just drag it down to the note you want. Right, and of course now it's too quiet, so bring up the symbol a little bit. Um, so let's hear. And now here comes the thing where, let's say, things between good and great, um, here's the difference. Um, probably 99% of the viewers and listeners won't recognize what's happening here. I, as a drummer, and a lot of drummers will hear as well, it's very, very unlikely that after the first initial crash, the drummer is playing already the first triplet note on the hi-hat because it takes just some time to uh, move the hand from the crash symbol to the hi-hat, depends where the crash was. And you don't need to even from a sound perspective because the crash symbol is lasting that long. So that's kind of like covering 
the first note anyway. So what I almost every time do when I program drum beats, like the first hi-hat or right pattern that comes afterwards, I delete it. Um, and that the hi-hat is coming back on the last triplet note here, uh, slightly, uh, straight before the snare. So let's listen how this sounds now. You hear? And again, just like a comparison. It's, it's a subtle difference, but this is exactly what um, distinguishes or um, separates a good from a great program beat. So you want to make sure that you do this. Um, in this case, let's talk about this now, right now, though it's creativity. Um, the beat here, of course, is um, that, uh, or the magic of this particular song, is that the hi-hat is playing a different uh, triplet shuffled feel than the bass guitar. The bass guitar is playing the... The, let's say the common shuffle like the one triplet two triplet and always leaving like the middle note uh, so it's, you have one triplet to two and three and four and five so this beat kind of like that you always have this 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 riding motion the drummer is playing exactly or almost exactly the opposite he's playing the notes uh, especially highlighting bit before and after the snare drum so um, it's one triplet and then the second trip again and this sounds like this. So let's delete this and highlight those two and make them a little bit louder. And this one again, a little bit quieter and this one a little bit louder again. So he's alternating um, quite the opposite what the bass player is doing, but this gives the song its driving motion. And you see those two are already kind of like a little bit offbeat. Sometimes he's leaving the notes with the snare drum out so you can, it's almost as if you were just playing every second note louder, but this is what the song is driving. You hear that? Of course, this is a really a lot of work because you don't want to just copy the first two bars and copy it to the whole song. Um, I would highly recommend if you really want to go the safe way, do this for the whole song. It's one time a lot of work, but you should do this. What you can do additionally is I just opened up the old session from the actual mix I did uh, before I forget, um, like what pros probably would do. Um, after distinguishing between the loud and the soft hits here on the hi-hat pattern, it's like when you really look at a motion of a drummer's hand, um, which um, is this so-called Moller uh, technique, where the drummer is like playing out of his um, wrist, um, playing with the tip of the stick at the top of the of the hi hats, and with the shoulder of his stick on the edge. So to recreate that um, is all what you want to do. So I just saw there was slipping one here. So let me bring it back. So. Um, what I did here is like all the um, the softer notes I put to the tight tip articulation here on the left side. This is how it sounds. And this is the closed edge. Right? You can even go to the closed tip so to have you um, to have the, the same articulation here. So both is closed and not um, the closed articulation and not tip. So between this and that, and this is how it sounds. So you see, um, this is of course already like a pro <coughs> approach. You need to have, of course, some understanding of a, of a drummer's technique. So if you are a drummer on your own, try to replicate that. If you're not a drummer, ask a drummer. Everyone should know a drummer at least in his life anyway. So um, this is like something like already like a pro feature, which uh, when you really go the next step or the final step in humanizing stuff for your beat. Here's this little break after beat 27. So let's jump into here. And you already hear what I did here um, is 
let's remove it first because I want to show you just exactly what I did here. So um, there's this little one bar break in the song, right? Um, and you can end with a crash. I decided just to end with um, with the hi-hat because I think that's what the drummer was playing in the song. Um, it's kind of like a subtle crash when you uh, play the last one with the kick uh, with an open hi-hat because it's not so loud and not so washy over the bar. Um, so let's uh, listen again to this part here. So you hear it almost rings out to the full bar. What a drummer would do uh, usually in a live situation to when you don't play to a click, for instance, um, a drummer is always trying to count with the song, at least a good one. Um, so either he's playing um, the one, two, three, four to know when he has to come back to the next one, which you don't have to do here in this case, of course, because you program the, the drum beat. But we talk about making it more um, let's say realistic, right? So what a drummer would do here is either uh, playing with the stick on his leg, just counting one, two, three, four, coming back, or to make it even more obvious, what he's playing often is um, closing the hi-hat pedal with his left foot and counting that way. And as Superior Drummer, uh, the software has captured this articulation, which is called close pedal here. Right, so there's exactly the sound when the drummer is just closing the hi hat, uh, the hi hat um, with his hat, uh, with his foot. So let's do exactly that. So here's the one, here's the two, three, and the four. Um, again, too static. So let's pick those three notes, bring them back a little bit, randomize a big bit, and just bring it down again. So it's subtle, but you can almost fool your listeners with exa exactly that effect because usually you don't program stuff like that. This is what a human is doing. So let's hear again. You see, um, and it's exactly what I did here again. I left the last hi-hat um, note out. Let's talk about the fills then, because this is another important thing. I think here at uh, bar number nine or 10, there would be the first fill coming into the song. Exactly. So let's program a little fill here uh, on the four. So let's assume we play just a basic tom fill here and end with a crash. Okay, so you can, I think in, in the original song I played something like this. Here's the last tip, thinking as a drummer. Um, and for this it helps. Uh, first of all, I've, I would probably, and this is what I did here exactly, um, like the two snare drum notes starting the fill, one is off center and one is center. Uh, a good drummer would probably both play the same center notes. In this case, I programmed it one off center, one center, one on the rectum, um, and then playing the crash. It would it help, helps here now to look at the drum kit. So he's playing, look at what drum is highlighted when I play the fill. So this is by nature now a um, a normal or a natural movement. Two notes on the uh, on the snare, run on the rectum, going to the main crash and back to the hi hat. What I often see is that because someone's programming drums and saying like it's just a symbol, so I use this one here, which is fine. This is symbol number five. So let's go back to the grid. So let's use this one here. Of course you can play this, but we talk about really the subtle things that makes the difference. Um, it's, at least from a drummer's perspective, it's very unlikely that after a fill like that, you play this crash to come then back the whole way again to the hi-hat. Um, so think of that as well. Just imagine the fill looking at, like even if you program, you're not drummer, look at the drum kit, how the field has, has been played and ask yourself, is this really the way how my drummer would 
move that way. Of course, there are fills um, like, and I can show you, when you program a fill like that, just like playing those two notes, on the both floor toms, then it's another case. Because then, in this case, he's playing one, two, three, and then he's with the hand here anyway, playing that crash. In this case, I would even be that picky, that I would probably pick the first hi-hat note after that fill, like this one, and bring it even more down, um, because maybe he missed just to come back that fast. It just makes the stuff more human. Because listeners, when they listen critically, they will hear exactly that. So listen from where the toms are coming and from where the cymbal is coming. The fill ends at the right side, so the cymbal has to come from the right side. Um, exactly that opposite when we do um, the opposite here. Tom's on the right side, fill uh, the last crash or the crash on the on the one then to start a new bar coming from the left. It's okay, as I said, nine out of 10 listeners won't recognize at all, but if you really want to have the full deal, then you should do this. So now uh, I will forward the video and will program the whole beat so you can hear the before and after. So now I'm done with the programming. Um, I did exactly everything uh, until the first break. What we've just discussed, what I did additionally is that I, uh, on the snare drum, I added some ghost notes uh, to have that Jeff Boccaro feel. So like the ghost notes in between snare, kick, uh, triplet, um, often very softly. And I placed those ghost notes between the center and the off center and randomized it even a bit, just slightly, uh, because ghost notes usually don't play exactly on the grid. So it's it's cool when they are somewhere in between. So let's have a final listen um, um, just by the new beat on its own. And then we'll come back afterwards with the final conclusion to show you the A and B where we started and where we ended. So here we are, both tracks are rendered. You see one track is called Start and the other one is called End. And I will just play the beat and switch between uh, both of them. Of course, it's too obvious, but I just wanted to show you where we started and where we ended it. So here's Black Velvet before and after the MIDI programming. <laughs> Thank you. 
So that was it. I hope you find this helpful. If, As always, if you have any questions uh, or comments regarding this video, leave a comment below. I would appreciate that. Consider to subscribe. Um, I'm almost hitting the 5,000 subscribers, which is a huge milestone for me. So thanks ever so much for all of you guys watching my channel and following my channel. Um, if you have a certain topic that you want like me to cover, not only drums related, but music related, please let me know. I will consider doing more videos in the future, of course. So uh, again, thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a fantastic week making music and see you next time. Bye bye.